Double your pleasure, double your fun. Two heads are better than one. Two flies probably better than half a fly. And two flies are better than one fly. That's right, and there's so many different ways to fish two flies. There are. I'm using a multi-rig system, you're going to double your odds of success. Two flies on one line. You can fish big flies and small flies together. You can also fish dry flies, wet flies. You can fish a stone fly followed by a caddis fly. You could fish two of the same fly that are different colors or different sizes. It's an awesome way to search the water and find out what the fish are interested in because you might find that they're only striking the top fly or they're only striking the bottom fly or that you've identified the mayfly that they are feeding on that day. Sometimes it's really difficult to match the hatch and you have to use the scientific method to take care of business. All over Idaho and Montana and lots of other places there's regulations that allow you to fish two flies with barbless hooks and we highly recommend you try it. Check your regs, know your role. This uh, multi-fly rig is called a dry dry and uh, what you do with a dry dry is tie on two dry flies. Um, in this case, uh, because we've uh, got the local intel that the purple haze is, is the uh, happening fly, I've got a large uh, purple fly here. It's not a purple haze, but it is purple. And I'm putting a larger fly up top just in case that excites the fish. This is uh, basically to attract them in and, and if they take a look, great, because that brings them closer to the smaller fly, which they'll probably take, the purple haze. And so, uh, this is a way to basically attract more fish to the surface, hopefully, and, and, and make the uh, surface action a little more fun. There's about 18 inches between the flies. Do 12 to 18 inches anywhere in there will be uh, sufficient. And you want to do maybe 5x down to the big fly or 6x, and then same or lighter tippet even down to the smaller fly. What I do is uh, above the big fly, I bring the tippet down to 5x, maybe 6x if the fish are real spooky. And below the big fly then, you would put on the same or finer tippet. So here I've got 5x tippet above the big fly, 6x tippet below it. And the idea is to uh, have the fish not see the tippet as usual. Hey guys, uh, I'm gonna show you right now the dry dropper technique. Okay, I've got a caddis fly and a small uh, mayfly nymph, okay? and um, it, as you can see right here, it's about 18 inches apart from fly to fly. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit more of a close-up of the flies that we're going to use. You can see this caddis fly, all right, is fairly standard, okay. Uh, it's got a, a tan, all right, hackle. And then uh, right around here, all right, you can see it's a, a small brown caddis, or excuse me, <laughs> a small brown mayfly. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take this downstream and uh, we're going to see how it does. Yeah. Oh, I got one. Oh, he took the dropper. Yahoo! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, this is great fun. I love this action. Look at the bend in the rod, guys. I mean, we drove nine hours for this. <laughs> for this bend in this rod right here. All right, come on in, buddy. Oh, he's feisty. He doesn't want to give up anytime soon. And I'll try to hold him up for you here, guys, so you can take a quick look. Woohoo! He doesn't want to come yet. Oh, he's a little cut. A little cutthroat. Here he is, right here. Wahoo! Here he is, guys. Whoa! Oh, let me just get that nymph out of his mouth. Okay, and he is good to go. Wahoo! This is the hopper dropper combo, and obviously it's a variation on the dry dropper combo that we use late in the summer in August and later to take advantage of all of the hoppers and crickets that are flying around and falling on the rivers of the west. Again, the large fly is up above and a smaller fly is about 12 to 18 inches below uh, the larger fly and the, and the smaller fly is, is a nymph, a sinking fly. So in this case, got a very colorful set of flies here, a yellow bottomed grasshopper with what's called a bullet head. That's what that 
rounded elk hair head is called. And below it, we have a red copper john, which is also a very flashy, attractive fly under the water. The fish are definitely gonna look at that. Definitely consider striking on it. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Fish the hopper dropper up here in this little cascade. And the way you know that a fish has hit on the dropper is simply that the hopper or the dry fly will dive under the surface. And that's the point when you set the hook. And uh, in this case, uh, we've got a small cutthroat. Still fishing the hopper dropper, and as I got up closer to the rapid and the cascade here, the hopper was the meal that this fish wanted, and it's a slightly larger, even a 12 inch uh, cutthroat again, who took the hopper. So this is two fish in about two minutes, just casting into the same pool with the hopper dropper, and one fish on each fly guys this is potentially the most dangerous of all the combos all right this dual fly rig is the dropper dropper when you approach a stream you've got a number of different decisions to make you can choose different species of flies you can choose the same fly different sizes and what I've done is I've chosen our, a, the same size same type of fly the same species but a different color these are uh, uh, say uh, pat stones that are uh, black and brown okay now the distances, all right? Here's the, 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 the fly that's dragging down below, all right? I'm gonna tie that about a foot behind, okay? And then you've got your strike indicator right here. And the strike indicator, depending on the depth of the pool that you're working in or the depth of the air, uh, the, the run, okay? Uh, this one is about, these things are sinking really fast, so uh, I tied it fairly close, okay? And it's only about two feet, all right? Okay, very cool. So right here, I'm using a bubble strike indicator, okay? And this is what you keep your eye on, okay? Because these are going to be underwater. I've got a brown uh, pat stone and then a black pat stone, okay? And depending on the depth, remember, again, we've got about two feet, all right? And a foot to a foot and a half between those right there. If you've got a deeper pool, add more length so that you can make sure to get your flies down. I made that mistake, all right, for a, for a couple of years when I was fishing. I want to set you up for success casting a double nymph rig with strike indicator. Here's my two nymphs and the strike indicator up here. There's three solid objects in this rig and so it's easy to tangle. So we start simple. We start simple by letting out the same length of line and not lengthening or shortening it. We're just gonna cast 10 to 20 feet of line and we're gonna find a slowish stretch of water and we're gonna cover the same 10 to 20 foot zone several times. In nymphing, the more time the nymph spends in the water, the better. So this is actually an effective strategy to simply stand in one place for a little while, make several casts, and then move upstream. So let's do it. So I've let out about 20 feet of line, and I've let it float downstream so that the tension is all in the line. And all I do to cast this strike indicator at this point is to lift and give it a gentle toss upstream. And that way, we're not casting back and forth and giving the line a opportunity to tangle up on itself. And now we let the strike indicator float downstream, keeping the slack out. As it goes by me now, I start to feed it a little bit of line. And I'm always watching for that strike indicator to dive under the surface because that's when I know that a fish may have taken the fly. And I set the hook by giving it a gentle tug, not too much because you don't want to rip that fly out of the fish's mouth. If that indicator has already dove, we know it's in the fish's mouth and all we got to do is gently set the hook because the hook is right there in the mouth. So I'm going to put it out there again with tension, lift and throw and let that strike indicator float down one more time, stripping the line in to keep slack out as it comes down close to me, looking for that strike indicator to dive and as it goes by me, I need a little more distance so I'm going to feed a little bit of line in there and then I set the hook. I saw it dive, but I seem to have missed that fish. And I feed it some line again. I'm gonna let it go all the way out. And I've got 10 or 20 feet of water here looking outward that I should cover. And so I cover different zones of the water as I cast it up and let it float back down. But I'm gonna stand here. I'll make 20 or 30 casts, give the fish lots of opportunity to look at the flies below this indicator. And that's how I would effectively fish a hole like this. What 
Good timing, Mr. Fish. Let's take a look at what we've got. Looks like it's a white fish. It's a pretty common fish to catch in a hole on a double nymph rig. They love to pick off these nymphs. Usually catching them underneath. Whitefish don't often come up for dry flies. And whitefish can sometimes be some of the biggest fish in the ri river. Come here, buddy. I'm gonna try at first to get this fly out without touching the fish, but as it's a small fly, I think that might be kind of tough. And so I'm gonna wet my hand and then I'm gonna pick up the fish gently because I've debarbed the hook, it's not too hard to pick up that fish. And then I'm gonna just point him upstream and he drifts to the bottom because he's a whitey and he's good to go.